Good morning, YouTube. High Mileage Rider here. It's a beautiful May 30th morning. A little bit of smoke coming in from the forest fires, but the temperature's plus 15 and it's going to go up to 25 today. Beautiful day for a motorcycle trip. I've got the 2014 V-Storm ready to go. Going to be meeting my buddy Ken from Kelowna in about, oh, probably five or six hours for him. For me, it'll be a short drive today, going to Strathmore, Strathmore Alberta to meet him. Then tomorrow, we're going to take off for Kenora, Ontario. Why? Because we're going to get ice cream. We're not going to see any fancy sights along the way. Just thousand kilometer days, sitting in the saddle, being one with the road. We'll see you when we're on it. And here we are coming up to Blackfoot Motorsports. There's a shot of downtown Calgary. Beautiful city. Jeff just left Blackfoot Motorsports. Huge dealership. They gave me a tour. It's approximately 50,000 square feet. They uh, sell every import and European bike other than Honda. Uh, massive dealership, very friendly staff. I'll, uh, put a few pictures in so you can see what the dealership looks like. It was uh, it was really nice visiting. So here we are, the town of Strathmore. And I called ahead to see what the rates were at the Best Western, and they were actually the best rates. At $100 for the night, that's pretty darn good. So I think we're gonna stay here for the night. Ken's probably about an hour or two behind me. We'll catch you a little later. So here we are, getting ready to leave Strathmore from the Best Western. I've picked up a hitchhiker. Ken is here. Let the fun begin. So here we are leaving Strathmore, Alberta, as you can see. It is incredibly foggy this morning from the smoke, or smoky I guess, from the forest fires. As I said earlier, I have now picked up a straggler. Ken is now here. You can hear the sweet symphony from his pipes on his Harley Davidson Superglide. So today we're going to be traveling along Highway 1, stopping at the end of the day in Moosamin, Saskatchewan. Probably going to make a lunch stop in Regina, get us some Mexican food. With this smoke there won't be a lot to see, 
some farm animals, some steaks. Let's see how Cam's doing this morning. He only had two cups of coffee today. Good. Revisor. So now we're coming past the town of Brooks, Alberta. So while you can't see it very well in the smoke, this is Medicine Hat. So as we're leaving Medicine Hat on our way to Swift Current, we came across this 47 Coupe Mercury. Gorgeous, gorgeous car. So here we are at the Saskatchewan border. And of course you know what that means. Picture time. Now on this trip, we are doing something different. Normally we pick the back roads, the twisty roads, and we stay off the super slab. But this whole trip is gonna be, oh, Ken's doing a stretch. This whole trip is going to be on the super slab because we're, for something different, we're just out to ride miles. We just felt like putting in 5,000 K in six days. Just because we can. Ken and I both have really comfortable bikes. He's got a 2008 Super Glide Clustom. And uh, he's had that since 2009. I know he's done the, the full stage one kit to it. It's got the 96 cubic inch motor. Uh, no cruise, but it does have that little thumb lock wheel that goes underneath the throttle. And he loves the bike. It's uh, really comfortable for him. I know that he, if we won the lottery, he would love to get himself a Road Glide Ultra for those long trips. And me, I'm perfectly comfortable on my uh, my 14 Beastrom 1000. She's running, purring like a kitten. Doesn't care what you do to her. And you know what? I really don't miss the cruise control all that much. I mean, I will look for it on my next bike, but this little $10 accessory that I bought, you press it down to hold and you're good. I've been using it uh, all day. And I'll adjust it every once in a while. Uh, but for the most part, on the flats, it holds your uh, speed pretty steady. So, it looks like somebody pulled over for speeding. And luckily it's not us. And here we are in Swift Current. Can you guess what the main industry is? <laughs> Farming. Now there is a beautiful shot of the prairies. I'm going to get a video of Ken taking a picture of me. <laughs> so over to our left, you could see a big mound of white. And no, even though this is Canada, that is not snow. It's salt. As we get past the trees, you'll get a little better picture of it. There's another one of those lakes, and you can see they're all dried up on the sides. You'll see as we get a little closer here. It's pretty darn cool. So you'll see it on both sides.
So, this is the town of Moose Jaw. There is an airplane and a big moose, so I think we need a picture. So now we're leaving Regina after a little bit of lunch. East on Highway 1. Sign says to Winnipeg, which we will eventually do, but we are going to Musumin for tonight. About another 225 kilometers. So a couple hours, and we will be there. Well, unfortunately, I didn't have the camera on, but about five kilometers ago, Ken and I just about uh, just about crashed. <laughs> we were driving in the right-hand lane, where say that black truck is, and ahead of us, say where that semi is, was a guy pulling a trailer. As we got closer, we realized we were going faster than him, so we switched into the left lane, the passing lane, to pass him. And as we probably got about 150 yards away from him, he slammed on his brakes and turned to the left and did a U-turn right in front of us and then started coming back towards us the wrong way on this one-way road. Holy shit, that was a pucker factor, man. When do you expect someone to do a U-turn and come right at you on the highway? Good thing this uh, Vistrom and his uh, Harley have really, really good brakes. We were able to slow down, swerve around him, and then just l look at him like, what the hell, buddy? <laughs> and he was totally oblivious to everything he was doing as he continued to drive the opposite direction, the wrong way on the highway. Crazy fucking people out there, man. They'll just give anybody a license. So we're about 15 kilometers away from Musumin, which is our destination for the day. And that'll be about 970 kilometers today. But I thought I'd give you a little closer view of the wind turbines. Made by Concord. So this is the town of Musumin where we're going to be staying for the night. If we find a place, I think we're going to go get some gas first. Nice looking little town. Obviously agriculture is a big thing. The Musuman Regional Museum. That's pretty cool. I think this is the main drag. Morning YouTube, here we are the morning of day three, leaving Musumin. We stayed at the Motel 6, $99.95 a night, plus tourism tax. It's a beautiful sunny day, and there is our canvas, the Trans-Canada Highway. About 550k to Kenora, we'll have some pickerel and some ice cream, and then we'll start heading back. Ken is getting ready for the morning, packing his trusty steed full of piss and vinegar. <laughs>
what interesting things will we see today? Maybe we'll see a Greyhound bus driving the wrong way on the Trans-Canada straight towards us. That is what makes life exciting. So we've been on the road for exactly nine minutes, eight minutes, and our first photo op. Welcome to friendly Manitoba. So now that we're in Manitoba, a quick look around lets you see that the landscape has changed vastly from Saskatchewan. Whereas in Saskatchewan we had miles and miles of nothing and flat ground, in Manitoba we have uh, flat ground and uh, miles and miles and miles of nothing. Although wait, wait if you look over there, I can see that dog I saw running away yesterday for about 985k. No, no, different dog, never mind. So today's ride is going to take us to Kenora, Ontario for ice cream and pickerel. Then we're going to turn around, because we should get there around noon, going to turn around and start the journey back, back through Winnipeg, and then we might even make it as far as Portage La Prairie coming back, where we will stop for the night. Looks like it's going to be a beautiful sunny day. Let's see what kind of trouble we can get into. So this is the town of Brandon. He wants something. He's in need of something. He's searching for something. Let's take a poll, YouTube. What do you think Ken is searching for? I think he's searching for a pea. And maybe some gas. We'll see you in a bit. This is pretty cool. We're on the highway. Just left Brandon. We're on our way to Winnipeg. And I'm not sure what this plane is doing. Is he going to land on the highway? Is he a crop duster? Or is it a police, a police airplane going to pull us over for speeding? I think he's a crop duster. Pretty cool. Some fellow motorcyclists on the road. There is our official sign for Explore Portage La Prairie. So this is the town of Headingley, Manitoba. And we are off the main highway of the Trans-Canada to do a little detour and what we're going to do is there's an actual bypass that goes around Winnipeg at the South Perimeter Highway and it will take us to Kenora without having to drive through Winnipeg. The Trans-Canada Highway East exit in three kilometers so we have successfully bypassed Winnipeg And we're off to Kenora, 199 kilometers. We should get there about one o'clock. Have our pickerel and ice cream, and then start the journey back. Center of Canada. 96 degrees, 48 minutes, 35. So in case you guys were wondering, in case you were on the edge of your seat as we left you, we did, in fact, 
make the next corner, did a little loop, some adventuring. It wasn't for the light of heart, so we uh, turned off the camera, but now we're back. We are on the Trans Canada heading to Kenora, 199 kilometers. So we're now entering the South White Shell and Falcon Lake Resort area. And there's your entrance to Falcon Lake. Welcome to Ontario. The Lakes of Ontario. Absolutely gorgeous. I guess there's a reason why they call it cottage country. We are now coming into the city of Kenora. Population 15,500. Beautiful road leading into Kenora. Been here a few times in my youth when I used to live in Winnipeg and we'd drive here for an ice cream, but it's been many a decade. So it's almost like it's all new. There's a nice view of the center of town and whatever that covered structure is. I think we're going to look for the name of that restaurant. Oh, careful, careful, Ken. <laughs> Kenora. So we're about uh, 15 kilometers from Winnipeg. We just stopped for a picture of that really cool Canada sign with the bikes in front. And uh, Ken's brother, who lives in Winnipeg, just texted us back. I don't know if he's working or not, but I think we're gonna, if possible, with absolutely no notice, see if we can stay with him tonight just to visit. And if not, then we will find a hotel. I'll let you know from the road. So, we have a verdict. We are going to Ken's brother's house, Little Daryl's house, uh, West St. Paul, and going to stay with him tonight and visit. We'll see you when we're there. So this area of Winnipeg, this is the Red River, but this is called Lockport. It's pretty cool. <laughs> there we go, experience Lockport.
Skinner's. Skinner's for ice cream. And the drive through. There it is, Skinner's.